with wildlife and trees or, you know, in general, there's um, a few rules of thumb. If you're thinking about uh, implementing management strategies to benefit wildlife on your property and if they involve trees and, you know, we can we can start talking about uh, potential options. Uh, there's some generalizations that I want to mention um, and then as well as getting into some specifics with certain species that will benefit certain types of wildlife. And um, this will be, the, I think, the only picture of a non-native tree in wildlife I have in the entire uh, segment. But this is unfortunately one of those negative interactions we sometimes see with wildlife, especially if you were hoping to eat some of those apples here soon, uh, as you know, many of our, our larger mammals also appreciate apple trees and their fruits. Uh, but in general, um, you know, there, there's a ton of species within Kentucky and our region that rely on trees for some part of their life cycle. Uh, sometimes it may be very much uh, almost entirely tied to a tree. Uh, other times it may just be as they are migrating through uh, roosting in a tree at night. Uh, but with the 500 plus species of, of traditional, what we think of as wildlife, uh, many, many of them are using trees at some point or another. Now, what does that mean in terms of what do they provide? Well, it kind of depends. Every wildlife species or, or, or group of species are going to utilize the trees in different ways. And that's important to understand if you are looking at trying to manage for wildlife on your property uh, or in your forest. You have to kind of understand what species you're looking to manage for so you can do a little bit of research to understand how they use tr certain tree species, uh, which will guide your management strategy. Um, as I mentioned, it, it can be short components. It could be entirely uh, obligated to the forest. You know, uh, examples uh, on the extreme end are things like rough grouse are, are especially tied to early successional forest, where if they don't have that present, uh, they're really not going to be present on, on your property. Other times, um, you know, we have species that use it for breeding season. We have about 150 breeding birds in Kentucky. Uh, a good chunk of those are, are either um, forested species or may utilize young trees and grasslands as they're growing up uh, for nesting or cover. Um, they also may utilize the trees uh, as a food source, uh, maybe the, the actual um, mass that is produced by the trees, uh, as well as uh, things like insects that are using the tree um, for their own food or cover. Uh, so a diversity of tree species also has a diversity of insects that use them, which then can provide and support more wildlife species. So in some ways, having a diverse forest or having a diversity of trees in your yard is going to help provide ample food via the insect route and the trophic levels. The other way, as I kind of mentioned it, for food that, you know, with wildlife and trees is the actual production of mast. Right. So whether that's soft mast, hard mast, um, that in itself is highly nutritious to many species. Uh, you know, we just went through a period with all the acorns dropping uh, in our, our, our woods in the state and uh, many animals like deer, turkeys, bear, uh, are a lot of rodents are going to key heavily in on those acorns because of the, the nutritional value they, they possess. Uh, other um, fleshy fruits uh, that are, are, are grown, um, whether they be persimmons, um, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of smaller berries that are produced. Cherries are another example, are, are, heavily, uh, are heavily favored and highly valued by many bird species uh, and, and mammal species as well. And there's the actual component where, you know, trees get consume themselves. The buds of the trees, uh, leaf material, and so on can be consumed directly by wildlife. Uh, and therefore, you know, a diversity of trees is going to provide basically a buffet of vegetation for, for many species to consume. In addition to the food component, you have a cover component where many situations, trees are providing the structure in the landscape that is going to 
give uh, animals escape cover from predators. It may give them uh, thermal cover during storm events, uh, provide them a place to go in the day, day daytime resting or nighttime roosting for things like turkeys. Uh, so it, multiple components uh, provided just by the fact that the tree is there. Then there's the, the reproductive component uh, where you may have um, animals that are nesting in cavities, uh, woodpeckers, wood ducks, um, uh, chickadees. Uh, there's a bunch of different species that will use the tree and the cavity that's created either by a woodpecker or another event uh, as their, their basically their reproductive area. Uh, that, and if they don't have it, they are not going to reproduce in that, in that area. Um, there's the actual structure that's there to allow birds to build nests in. Uh, there's also things like um, roosting habitat, which I'm going to get into, that can, can also act as a uh, reproductive habitat for things like bats and, and their maternity colonies that they have, where you may have their pups in the actual tree itself because of the cavity that's created or the thermal zone that's created from things like shagbark hickory. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways trees can help wildlife. Uh, sometimes they're not immediately obvious. Uh, things like drum logs for grouse, where uh, if they don't have a log present to, to do their little display on, they're going to have a hard time attracting a mate. Uh, it can be things like hunting perches for herons or, or raptors, uh, or it could be, you know, the tool they use to uh, dam up a, a, a river to create the pond and the habitat they need, as is the case with beavers. So there's a bunch of different things that trees do help provide for wildlife. Now, if you're thinking about managing wildlife and trying to benefit wildlife with trees, um, there's a lot of options. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a large property full of trees to benefit wildlife. It can be done um, in small backyards. Uh, it can be done on, on medium-sized properties. Um, making sure, first and foremost, the easiest thing you can do is making sure that you have a healthy landscape uh, on your property, uh, free of invasive species, a good diverse stand, uh, is a very simple way of benefiting wildlife. You don't have to necessarily plant new trees or do active management in terms of harvest to, to shift things uh, in a certain direction. If you have a healthy forest in Kentucky, you are benefiting a lot of different wildlife species. If you want to um, think about doing that and you may not know a start, good starting uh, place, you know, do I even have a healthy forest? This is a great chance to bring in some of our, our state agencies that can help you uh, in terms of guiding you on what you may or may not need to do on your property to benefit wildlife. So the Division of Forestry, getting a forest management plan, or reaching out to Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources and, and their farm bill biologists to come up with a, a wildlife management plan for your property are great uh, avenues to kind of reach that goal. But simple rules um, outside of that, you know, that which, you know, if you get those management plans, many of these things are going to be included, are any tree that is native to Kentucky, to the area that you are, are residing or managing, is going to provide something for wildlife. It is, if, if it is a species that they evolved with in the area, they're going to probably utilize it in some way, shape, or form. Ideally, we want to try to encourage trees that can provide multiple resources. So, you know, pretty much every tree provides cover. We want to try to encourage species that may also provide food uh, to, you know, some wildlife um, group uh, along the way during the year. Uh, or, you know, you may encourage trees that provide some kind of roosting habitat for, for bats, say. Um, so, Best case scenario, you provide multiple things with one tree species. Almost all the trees we have are going to support some level of insect life. So in some ways, it doesn't really matter if it's native, it's going to have some bugs on it. And bugs equal food for many wildlife species. Um, so it... it also um, coincides that many of our mass producing species, especially our oaks, uh, and beech and hickories also support an incredible diversity of insects. Uh, so in many ways, you get it to double dip. 
um, in terms of, of, of wildlife benefit. You get the mass production, you also get the insect production. Um, so when we start thinking about trees for wildlife, and you know, in essence, we're, we're talking food, right? So the best thing to do is you look at, all right, every tree provides cover. How do I make sure most um, food needs are, can be met on my property or at least in the area of my property? First and foremost, you can start thinking about the groups of trees, whether it's hard mass producing or soft mass. In hard mass, the, the, the groups of trees that benefit wildlife the most are things like oak, hickory, and beech. Uh, these are all going to benefit, especially larger bodied wildlife species, uh, quite a bit. But as I just mentioned, these groups of, of trees are also heavy uh, supporters of insect life and a diversity of a lot of Lepidoptera species. So your, your moss, your butterflies, which are, are really favored quite uh, highly uh, by many uh, bird species and bat species as food sources. So these are the groups that you want to look at. In terms of soft mass, you're looking at um, quite a few. There's a good diversity of tree species that you can utilize, uh, ranging from sumac, which has a, a really uh, great benefit for uh, bird species as, as uh, their seed is, is preferred by many, many different uh, winter birds that we have here. Um, in terms of other mass producers, uh, service berry, dogwood, mulberry are, are heavily favored uh, when they're uh, on the trees. Uh, they are picked uh, by mammal species uh, and also birds uh, as well. Um, and then when you get a little bit larger into things like persimmons, uh, you're starting to lose the benefit to many of the smaller species like the avians, uh, but you are gaining a benefit to, to larger species, white-tailed deer, uh, groundhogs, raccoons, uh, coyotes um, are, are really fond of persimmons. Uh, so, you know, you can look at basically anywhere um, you can provide multiple hard mass and soft mass on your property uh, at the same time is a good thing. Um, finally, some of the last big group of trees here that I want to touch on uh, are your, your more your thermal cover, uh, your, your pines, your cedars that are going to provide a, a pretty big benefit, especially during winter storms. Um, you know, because they have, if they're, if they're, growing together, they can shelter a lot of animals from um, high winds, uh, rain events, uh, snow events. Uh, so we see a lot of use of uh, cedar thickets uh, during those extreme weather events. Uh, also, some species will, will consume, uh, readily consume that soft mass that's produced by uh, these guys, as well as the, the seeds and the pine cones, if they can get access to them. Um, so they're, they are duly beneficial uh, in many ways uh, that hard hardwoods are not uh, in winter, um, as well as providing a food source. So it's always good to have a few of these guys somewhere present, usually bunched together to get that thermal benefit. Um, now, in terms of backyard management, um, really any time uh, you can uh, provide any of these species in an urban suburban setting, um, you're going to benefit wildlife. It's especially true if you can really go away from um, non-native landscaping and shift towards native landscaping as a lot of our smaller species or more mobile species can take advantage of backyards uh, in ways that um, will allow them to, to benefit their populations. Uh, think bluebirds um, especially have done quite well. Hummingbirds, uh, anytime you have... Um, just a small yard with a lot of good resources in it, things are going to use it. Uh, and as long as you don't have a cat in your yard, uh, you're going to have a positive impact uh, generally on the population. So unfortunately, I'm going to really quickly mention this on the, the urban side. Um, if you build resources like that in your backyard, uh, be prepared uh, as you know, there are potential downsides. Um, you know, you are inviting an environment to, to welcome wildlife, so try to be ready to welcome them, welcome them or at least deal with the problems uh, as best you can. Uh, now with that, there's a lot of information that's out there present on selecting uh, trees for wildlife. Uh, Purdue has a great publication uh, on the benefits to specific wildlife species for each tree species. Um, that uh, is commonly used in the landscape or found in the landscape. Um, 
there's also uh, strategies, uh, the, the books that were in the previous uh, slide here. Um, Gardening for Birds by my predecessor, Tom Barnes, uh, gi gives you great uh, ideas on how to lay out your yard uh, if you're interested in doing that. Uh, as well as, you know, I mentioned reaching out to our, our, our um, agencies, state agencies, to get some guidance if you haven't already done so. 